Uh, I'm Blair Drossen, and welcome to Draw Like Drossen and Paint Too. You're wondering, why? What, what, do I have the right to tell you anything? Uh, yes, I do. I, I want to share with you what I have learned over decades of editorial work as an illustrator. Did a lot of magazines for all of uh, the North American market. And in the course of that, I learned to work to a fairly rapid pace to get the job done on time, meeting deadlines and so on. And also out of the desire to experiment and try, try different things, I've come up with a couple of discoveries that I'd like to share with you, uh, which I don't think are taught in art school. And I find them to be valuable. And I'm assuming, by the way, that you are also a visual artist. So I'm not trying to, you know, change your style or anything along those lines. I'm just offering you something that could be possibly quite useful for you in the formulation of your own imagery. But before I do that, I just sort of want to make a couple of general comments about how we learn to draw, how we learn to paint. You know, as children, nobody taught us how to paint a mural on the wall with mom's lipstick. It's out of that spirit that I want to share and communicate with you what I think is very valuable about art. And that is, it's the free expression coming from unconscious mind, shall we say. You know, we're taught at a certain age that the best art is basically copying. So we learn to capture the shape of a tree or a house or the family dog or grandmother. And somebody comes along and says, oh my goodness, that really looks like grandmother. You're a good artist. <laughs> and you know what? That's only part of it. That's only part of the game. So I want to show you another part that I think is far more stimulating and actually fun. It's not as disciplined as trying to capture grandmother, whatever it might be. It does not have to do with capturing. It has to do with conjuring. Right now, I have to tell you, my mind is empty. I don't have any idea of what I'm going to be doing here. But I want to show you how I go about starting, okay? Because I think it's out of that where the real pleasure and joy lies. Okay, I'm going to start with a green, a violet, and a black, just to start. Okay, so I'm going to start scrubbing away with this, maybe something like this. Now, as you can see, I'm working with the broad side of the uh, pastel. You can use graphite. Graphite is not quite as dense as the pastel, but as you can see, it is useful because it knocks this white back to kind of a medium tone. Something like this. This is more of a neutral red. Grab a piece of paper towel. The white of the paper is still shining through a lot here and I want to knock that back. I want to really sort of go to town with these tones. You know, as you can see, it's just a scribble. It's undifferentiated, it really has no meaning. So what we could do is we could turn the paper. It's held in place by these clamps, so I'm not worried about it, you know, going anywhere. I've got a big, broad area of sort of like a burnt umber. I'm gonna just establish this as maybe a plane. It could be the ground on which something is standing or relating to. Or on the other hand, I might turn the whole thing upside down later on and make that the sky. Even though it's brown, it's sort of an inappropriate color for sky. But again, we're not trying to mimic nature. We're trying to simply reflect on nature and be inspired by it. The two media that I like to work with are pastel, which I'm working on right now, and acrylic. The way I paint anyway, the two of them work together very well. Good thing about the um, pastel is I can just reach for colors. I can establish them. Right now the colors are kind of raw, they're unrefined. But as I, for instance, blend them, 
we can see that a couple of things are happening. First of all, the color starting to cover the paper a bit better and knock it back from all of this white. We can always retrieve white later on, but either by the direct application of paint or even white pastel. We can pull it off with an eraser to some degree. I'm gonna just work on this a little bit more with the pastel, and then I'm gonna visit it with some paint. So let's just see what happens here. I'm gonna a little more of this blue up here. really smear it back. I'm not really trying to draw. I'm really, really at the stage of just sort of scribbling and mucking around and having fun. Having fun in the course of doing that. Okay, so let's say I want to modulate that blue a little bit and come in with, say, some of the sort of turquoise color. Now what is going to happen? doesn't have any meaning. I don't see anything emerging yet. But the key of all of this is that the work will start to talk to you. Don't you try to impose your will on the work so much as listen to what the work has to tell you. That's really the key to it all. So we're noticing that there's white showing through still. Up here, a bit more dense. All right, now I'm really gonna come in with this and really scrub that color into the paper and just see what it does. As you can see what it does. Don't necessarily wanna do it completely all over the image, in a, again, in a uniform way. And I like surprises. This is a wonderful means to usher in surprises. You leave the door open for that. A lot of the white is still showing through. It still feels very pastel-y, you know. Knock it back and knock it into an area of mid-tone. I hope you're noticing that the application of the pastel right now is a little more touch and go as opposed to what I was doing earlier. So, and what am I doing that for? I'm sort of establishing these arbitrary little bits of character. And uh, so I just did something there. There are various ways of doing that. So right now I'm working on a vertical piece. So this is 30 by 22. This is a sheet of Stonehenge paper. Stonehenge I like because it's good strong paper. It withstands dry color and it also withstands acrylic quite well. What is happening is now it seems to me that there's it's the suggestion of figures that want to show up in the picture. And what sort of figures are they going to be? We don't know. We really don't know at this stage of the game because we're still just goofing around, leaving the door and the window open for something to fly in some wonderful bird of surprise. <laughs> the bird of surprise, yes, that's what we want to see. Okay, so now comes the moment when I'm thinking, do I want to start really drawing big? Do I want one large figure of some kind or another? Or do I want perhaps a small group of figures? It could be two, it could be three, it could be, I don't know, circus performers, or it could be a human and an animal. It's still too early to, to tell. Notice though, I'm leaving little bits and pleat pieces where the white is gonna show through. And as I push these other tones back, these white tones will become more apparent. I would predict that when we reach more towards the finish of the picture, these little bits of white that are bleeding through will have more significance. Oh, and the other thing too that I can do is I will grab a kneadable eraser. I've got a bunch of them that I should probably replace them. And I'm gonna just see what happens when I scrub away a little bit. You know, so I'm creating a few lines here and there. Bringing the lines back 
they're just again, I don't know, just arbitrarily make, pull some things off here and there. I'm, I've never been a big one for um, either landscape or, or still life, but it's just as applicable to landscape or still life. <laughs> this is just an old piece of paper that I had cut out some shapes. And I find I use these shapes, like there's some curves in here that every now and then it might be kind of nice just to establish a gentle C curve like that. And maybe down here, another one. We're just playing with tonalities and color. Right now, I'm working more towards tonality than color. So the color is already, as you can see, quite a cacophony. <laughs> it's, uh, so there's a whole bunch of colors that are all clamoring. And they will, as we work, as we develop the picture more, we're probably going to tame those colors down a little bit. Anyway, we'll talk more about that as, as we proceed. Mm -hmm. 